Welcome to this session of ABB Motors Explained. I'm Mac McGee, Training Manager for the ABB NEMA Division. Today I will be covering the typical wiring of a three-phase AC induction electric motor. First, safety is paramount. This video is to help you understand how a three-phase AC induction motor is wired. It is not a how-to video per se. This video is to show you the principles only. The wiring of any electrical device should be performed by a licensed professional. Now we always need to ensure we are wearing the proper PPE. In this case, all I need is eye protection. Now I wear eyeglasses, but these are not enough. As you can see, there are no side shields on my glasses, so I do not have full eye protection with these glasses. However, I do have a pair of safety glasses with side shields that will fit over my eyeglasses to fully protect my eyes, like so. Now whenever we're dealing with incoming power, we need to make sure the wires are not live. The best and the safest way to do this is through lockout tagout procedures. The Occupational Safety and Health Administration, or OSHA, set safety standards for all workplaces in the United States. You can find these lockout tagout procedures in the OSHA standard 1910.147, which covers the control of hazardous energy. Once you have followed this OSHA standard and isolated the equipment from power, you can then check each wire with a voltmeter to verify that the wires are not live. Only after these steps are performed should you work with the wires themselves. If you are inexperienced, with any of these procedures, please consult with your local licensed electrician. So to get into the actual procedure of wiring this motor, let's first look at the power cable itself. As you can see, this cable has four wires, one wire for each of the three phases, and one grounding wire. You'll notice that the grounding wire is green, and it has a U-shaped terminal attached to the end of it for ease of installation. You will not always see this. Sometimes the grounding wire is just bare wire like you see on the three phases. Now let's look at the tools you will need. First we're going to use a quarter inch nut driver, a 5 16 inch nut driver, four wire nuts, and some electrical tape to finish off the connection. Please make sure that your wire nuts are the correct size for the wire gauge you will be dealing with for there is no one size fits all. If you're not sure how to check wire gauge, please consult with your local licensed electrician. So, this is the quarter inch nut driver that will be used to remove the conduit box lid. As you can see, there was one screw in each corner, and after removing the conduit box lid, you will be able to see the grounding lug in the lower right corner of the conduit box. Now this is where the grinding cable will be attached. You will then use the 5 16 inch nut driver to loosen that lug so the ground wire can be secured and then tighten down to secure it to the motor frame. Now, I've ran the incoming power up through the bottom of the conduit box and we've got the three phases here as you can see. We've also got the ground wire that is now connected to the grounding lug in the bottom right corner of the conduit box. This was very easy to install due to the U-shaped terminal that I mentioned earlier. But we've also got a mass of wires coming out of the motor itself. Now these are called flying leads. And on this motor, there are nine of them. And as you can see, the wires are all numbered and color coded. So how do we make sense of this? Well, first we need to look at the wiring diagram on the motor. It has two sections, low voltage and high voltage. In this video, we will be wiring for low voltage. And you can see on the nameplate where there are two voltages, 230 and 460. If this was a single voltage motor, then there would be less leads. So, we can see all these numbers and lines on the diagram. Remember, the flying leads are numbered, so if you look at the top line, it shows 654 all connected together. Then below that, it shows three different pairs, 
nine and three, eight and two, seven and one. But below the three pairs, we also see where it says line. Line is the incoming three phase power right here. So each one of those pairs will connect to each phase of the incoming power. So in total, we'll have four connections. The 654 will be connected internally to themselves, and 93, 82, and 71, each will be connected to each of the three phases. Okay, so if you look closely here, what I've done is I've gone ahead and wired up three of the four connections that are on the wiring diagram. I did the one that is internal, the 654, which is the purple, black, and yellow wire. So those wires are only connected to themselves and not connected to any of the three phases. I also did the nine and three pair, which is the gray and orange wire, and connected it to one phase of the incoming power. And then the eight two wire, which is the red and white wire to the second phase, which is right here. All I have left is the seven one pair, which is the pink and blue wire, to connect to the third phase, which you can see here. So I've got the three internal wires that are hooked together, the first phase and then the second phase. They all have wire nuts and they're taped. So all we have left to wire the motor is one more phase to the final 7-1 pair. And then I'll finish it up with the electrical tape and the wiring will be complete. After that is complete, we need to double check all of the connections with the wiring diagram to make sure that we've got all the wire combinations correct. After we've done that, we can then carefully insert the connections into the conduit box and secure the conduit box lid using the screws and the quarter inch nut driver. So what are some things to consider after all of this? Well, let's look at wire nuts versus other types of connectors. Are wire nuts the only way to connect the leads? No, there are other methods which include bell clamps and mated terminals, which you can see here on the table. Wire nuts are widely used in the industry, which is why they were shown in this video. The National Electrical Code has no standard method for terminating connections as this is left up to the licensed professional doing the install. Now let's look at reversing rotation. The wiring diagram on this motor is set up for clockwise rotation. If you want the motor to run counterclockwise, the directions for doing so are stated on the wiring diagram itself. All that needs to be done in this case is to swap any two line leads, for example, the seven and the nine. So now let's talk about single phase motors. When dealing with single phase motors, one thing to remember is that some single phase motors are not reversible. If they are reversible, then again refer to the wiring diagram on the motor and it will tell you what leads to swap. Another thing to consider is not all motors are dual voltage. In this case, it was dual voltage. When you're dealing with a single voltage motor, you will only have three leads instead of nine. So in that case, you would simply connect each individual lead to each phase. So make sure you read the nameplate and the wiring diagram to make sure if the motor is single or dual voltage. I hope you have enjoyed this latest session of ABB Motors Explained. I'm Mac McGee, and as always, be safe, and we'll see you next time.